All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started, guys, with kind of talking about the format um, of the webinar. I'll run my video real quick to get us started. Um, so throughout the uh, webinar, we have some people from VMware on the line as well. We have one of my co-SEs, uh, Brent, and some additional people from the Blue Medora team. Um, so as we go throughout, feel free to put questions in the Q&A, as well as we'll be kind of running a few polls throughout this session. Uh, but quickly, uh, just to kind of introduce the, uh, the broader team here today, uh, my name is Shelly, for those that I haven't met yet. I'm uh, your cloud management solutions engineer here at VMware. So I cover the whole vRealize portfolio and support 14 uh, core account teams throughout the lower Southeast and mid-Atlantic. Um, I'm also joined here by my uh, co-speaker, uh, Brock Peterson, and he is from the Blue Medora team. And he'll be going into a little bit how Blue Medora can enhance uh, the visibility that you're already getting with vRealize operations. Uh, Brock, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, thanks, Shelly. I'm Brock Peterson, a solution architect from Blue Medora. So we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, our management packs extend vRealize operations uh, beyond vSphere into compute network uh, infrastructure type stuff. So thanks for the invite, Shelly. Yeah, thanks for coming, Brock, and thanks for everyone else that's joining in today. Um, just to quickly review what we'll be covering in the next 30 minutes, we're going to start out with a survey. Um, Brock and I really want to get a handle on what you guys are using for compute and hyperconverge, containers and cloud, and database and applications for the demo that Brock will be doing later in the call. Uh, I'm going to quickly review the operations management use cases and do an introduction to manager packs. And then uh, Brock's gonna jump into the demo and true visibility integration, and we'll finish up with wrap up and next steps. So um, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna launch, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a uh, poll for you guys. So hopefully, hopefully that has popped up on your screen now if technology is uh, doing me well. Um, but I would love for you guys to just quickly go through those questions that popped up and tell us what you're using for compute and converge infrastructure, uh, what you're using in your environment for virtualization containers and cloud, and what you're using for database and applications, right? Because what we're hoping that you guys can get out of this webinar is seeing how you realize can help you guys monitor all the aspects of your environment in a single place. I see some of you guys are tuning in uh, to the poll, so I really appreciate that. But as you guys are looking through those questions and answering, I'm going to go ahead and review the be realized operations management use cases. Um, there are three big use cases delivered by vRealize operations and the extended vRealize product, products, which also include vRealize Network Insight, Automation, and Log Insight. First, it's basically the bread and butter of vRops, which is self-driving operations. This goes across your VMware cloud as well as your modern app platforms. What is your VMware cloud? Well, VMware cloud means that it's a VMware SDBC stack, whether it's running on-prem as a private cloud or delivered by Cloud Foundation, or in multiple public clouds such as AWS or Azure. The Realize operations can help you automate performance, capacity and cost management, compliance monitoring, and troubleshooting. And now, with the support of vSphere 7.0, we are also including new modern app platforms as first class citizens in vSphere, as in the case of Kubernetes. The second use case is around multi cloud monitoring and migration planning. This is where you can use vRealize Network Insight to map application dependencies. You can use operations what if scenarios to plan migrations. And then post migration, you can use vROPS and actually be ready to monitor and troubleshoot across multiple private and public clouds. The third and last major use case is around end to end network visibility and application security planning. This is another place where vRealize Network Insight can be used, providing that visibility across data center, into the cloud, into branch and edge locations. Today, we are going to focus on that first use case on how we can troubleshoot issues from apps to infrastructure and from VMs to, to containers across your full data center. So uh, let's talk uh, quickly about the challenges of uh, modern, modern, manner, modern monitoring, uh, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. Um, as you know, IT is doing so much, but often with so little. You're constantly researching, testing, installing new software, or building new cloud instances. We all agree that the distributed nature of the modern technology wor world is exciting and promising, and really, really hard to keep track of. Instead of monolithic hardware and software stacks in the data center, technology resources ex exist ideally wherever and however they're the most effective. 
That means that cloud applications can be delivered from many different locations to many different users, and that various pieces of the infrastructure could be hosted or delivered by many outside providers, and that applications quickly, as do the servers and memory storing this constantly created information. It's clear that the sheer volume of things to monitor in a distributed environment gets overwhelming pretty quickly. Keeping track of what apps are part of the NT environment is a challenge already, not to mention monitoring the performance of each one and the integration and interactions between applications. This complicated scene means it can be really easy to ignore or overlook the need for true performance monitoring. Maybe that means you're relying on, on old APM tools that only do some of the job, like monitoring only legacy applications or applications running, running in a certain network. You also might be seeing the same reporting problems every week or month, but not actually exploring the underlying causes. Performance monitoring also gets tricky in a distributed world when members of the IT team have to track problems through separate interfaces or portals. It's not uncommon to have to rely on application logs to find problems or that many tools aren't integrated into the larger IT ecosystem. It can also be difficult to recreate problems that happen in production or find time to solve an underlying problem rather than treat the symptoms or settle for underperforming apps that just went wrong. Plus, IT teams are having to address code, server, and service issues all the time for many distributed, distributed sources. Because of this, we've had to rethink the processes and tools that underpin our monitoring strategy. At VMware, we've rethought the operations management too, building a machine learning platform that simplifies and automates data center and cloud operations by introducing critical must-have self-driving capabilities. We realize operations connect, senses, and adapts to your environment. It provides actual insights and visibility into your business needs to optimize performance, utilization in your private cloud, hybrid cloud, and multi-cloud environment, and simplify app op application operations for packaged applications. You all need to ensure that your private and public clouds don't become your next enterprise IT silos, and our platform can help replace traditionally reactive, error-prone, and manual processes. You all say in complete observability and actionable visibility across clouds as you ensure resources dynamically deliver on your business requirements. These tools that you're looking at should monitor your physical servers, your storage, networking, applications, public clouds, and frankly, anything you want them to. This extensibility gives you great flexibility as a virtualization admin. Ask yourself when you're looking at tools, can the tool monitor Amazon Web Service instances, Oracle databases, VMware vSAN storage, Docker containers, Windows OS, and SAN or NAS arrays. Even if they can though, are they just showing you data from those sources or on a monitoring, just showing you those data sources on a single interface isn't enough. Why? It's about collecting all those data into one place and correlating it with those virtual infrastructure statistics. And once you've done that, can you do even more with that data? And that's where Blue Medora comes in. It's the best way to extend visibility into the we realize operations platform. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Brock to start to introduce the Blue Medora platform. Yeah, thanks, Shelly. So um, what is Blue Medora and what do we do? Um, what, what we're trying to do is build management packs that extend we realize operations beyond the virtual infrastructure, right? So so core to the tool is VRealize Operations' ability to monitor things like clusters, VMs, hosts, data stores, and provide relationships between them. So what Blue Medora does is extends that into your compute, network, storage infrastructure, maybe above your hypervisor, into databases, things like that, making VRealize Operations sort of your first pane, your go-to uh, monitoring platform and data analytics engine for your infrastructure, right? So we do management packs, uh, essentially. We also do content packs for Log Insight, which, which are focused here as well. But uh, we have 58 or 60 different management packs on the truck currently. So Shelly, if you could go to the next slide. Perfect, thank you. So these are all the technologies that we have covered currently. So if you were to look at this, say, three years ago, you might have 20 uh, 25 different products here. Now we have roughly 60. Uh, we have them packaged into three different tiers, standard, advanced, and enterprise. So standard is basically all of our compute platforms and um, Dell EMC storage. Advanced, of course, includes standard and gets into networking gear uh, as well as converge, hyperconverge, and some of our connectors to other monitoring platforms if you're using those. And then enterprise is the full enchilada. So that gets you everything, including database uh, above your hypervisor as well. So the management packs that we have here 
Um, we are agentless, right? So everything that you see runs within the framework of vRealize operations itself. So um, no agents out on switches, controllers, things like that. We simply leverage uh, generally APIs, uh, sometimes JWC or SNMP calls to the actual target. We pull that data back to vRealize operations, let the data analytics uh, perform its magic on it, do relationships to things like data stores, for example, for storage, the ESXi host for uh, compute, things like that. So you know what hardware ESXi hosts are running on. You know um, what ESXi hosts and VMs are using, um, you know, various switch gear, things like that. So uh, next slide, Shelly. Okay, so at this Rob, point, we're going to share and give you share. And while we're setting that up, guys, let's, we can review the uh, results of the poll. So thanks to all of you guys uh, for tuning in. Um, we definitely, it seems like we have a lot of Dell users out there, Brock. So uh, five out of uh, 13 people that answered the poll are using VxRail, and three out of 13 are using uh, PowerEdge. Um, we have two Cisco UCS, and we have one across HPE, Lenovo, and Nutanix uh, specifically. Uh, you know, okay. we'll start talking about cloud and virtualization. Uh, everyone using VMware vSphere. Uh, we got a few hybrid V out there as well. Um, we got a, a lot of Azure people out there today. So that's seven out of 13 people mm -hmm. say they are using Azure as their cloud. Um, we have one for Docker and Kubernetes. And then uh, when we get into databases and applications, uh, 12 out of 13 are using Microsoft SQL, 6 out of 13 are using MySQL, we have uh, 7 out of 13 with Mang uh, MongoDB, um, and then about half for SAP ServiceNow and uh, Apache. So, um, Okay. Great. Thanks for that summary, Shelley. Um, the nice thing is all of those mentioned are covered, right? So whether VMware is providing the solution or Blue Medora is providing the solution, I don't think I heard a technology that can't be covered within vRealize operations. So, you know, some of it um, will be VMware provided, um, some of it will be Blue Medora provided, and at times, you know, third parties develop their own management packs for these as well. But Blue Medora is in the management pack business. I think if you go out to the VMware Solutions Exchange, you'll see that um, we provide most of the, the content there, most of the management packs, uh, and certainly provide trials for anyone that, that is interested as well. So, Shelly, can you see my screen? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, so, so what do we look like within vRealize operations? Um, I design a certain number of dashboards in virtually every POC or trial that we do to, to try and provide visibility for, for the client into their infrastructure. This, this dashboard is basically designed to do that, kind of starting at the, the high top level, showing all of your alerts and what that actual alert might be touching, right? So for example, I've built an interaction here. I, I select an alert over on the right-hand side. It shows me what that alert is actually happening on, in this case, a particular VM. It shows me all of the parents and all of the children of that object, right? So the data store that uh, its VMDK sits on, the host that it's in, uh, the gear that that host is running on. So in this case, we would ma do a mapping from ESXi host to say UCS blades, for example, for Cisco. Um, and if we had other objects down below this, we would also show you know, storage volume supporting a data store, networking gear uh, that's being run through. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But the idea is that the top row here is showing every alert in your environment. You can sort this various ways. I just have it sorted by object in this case. And then it shows you everything that touches that object, right? We're trying to find objects that are unhealthy. And this will show every alert, whether it be a Blue Medora generated alert or a VMware generated alert. An alert is an alert in VRLIS operations. So the second row is designed to show vSphere type information, right? And I've used the heat map widget. So each of these little boxes, of course, is a widget um, to show you your cluster host VM and data store health. Um, of course, we're looking for red here, red being bad, green being good, showing you kind of high level, I call these morning coffee dashboards, allowing users to see the health of their environment at a glance each morning when they come in, right? So, you know, if you're interested in um, 
the detail behind any of these, it's easy enough to just double click uh, on the object that is read, and it'll take you down into the summary page. The summary page changes a little bit in 8.1. I think it gets quite a bit uh, more efficient, it's clean, it's concise. So those of you that aren't at 8.1 yet, I would encourage you to get there. Um, this is what the summary page looks like in, in 8.1. So, you know, we look at things like time remaining, high-level KPI, CPU, uh, disk total IOPS, things like that, as well as do I have any alerts? Of course, we did for this particular box some critical alerts. Um, it looks like we have um, you know, constraint by CPU demand. That's what we thought we would have. That was what our alert was based on. So um, I would encourage you guys to, you know, get to 8.1 see the new feature functions. I think alert creation is a little bit better in 8.1. They do uh, a new plugin for Slack in 8.1. Um, so if you haven't gotten there, take the time to get there. So the top half of this dashboard is basically just vSphere type stuff, right? So the bottom half, there's a lot going on here, but it's a lot of good stuff. So um, you know, we have our database layer, right? So I heard SQL, MySQL, MongoDB, and some others represented on the call. We have all of those platforms represented here. So the third row, SQL, Oracle, MongoDB, Postgres, DB. We hit these database platforms via JDBC or APIs, least privilege, user uh, access. We're not doing any writing. We simply read data, pull it back to Visualize Operations, and then map it back to VMs that those platforms sit on, right? So um, similarly, when we jump down into storage, compute, and network, um, we're represented here with, with Occam um, from NetApp, uh, Flash Array from Pure, uh, and then VMAX and 3PAR. So if you're running multiple storage platforms in your environment, we can monitor all of them. Bring them back to visualize operations and do the relationship mapping from your storage platforms to data stores, right? So if you have ill-behaved data stores, we can tell you the volumes that are supporting them. Perhaps you have some latency, some IOPS, and throughput issues on that uh, actual volume or LUN. We can explore that. And we'll work our way down into your compute platforms. So I think we had all of them represented on the call here, but in this case, generally, we're going to hit the service processor uh, for PowerEdge and ProLiant. So think iDRAC and ILO. Uh, for UCS, we will hit the API of the manager, so UCSM or UCSC. Um, and Lenovo, we hit XClarity. But we will uh, capture any of the alerts that are created by those platforms, as well as things like performance metrics, hardware failures, and the like, pull them back to realize operations, and then relate them back to ESXi hosts, right? So we can tell you the hardware that ESXi hosts are sitting on. And then finally, uh, I have some network gear here. Uh, we support Catalyst Nexus MBS from Cisco, generally just uh, SNMP calls to those switches. Of course, we support the NX API for Nexus as well. But um, And then I have some Lenovo switch gear here. Uh, we have a generic networking management pack that we use for um, other vendors. Think uh, Checkpoint or Brocade, something like that, right? If we have SNMP access to a switch, we can capture the data, bring it back to Vrealize Operations, and, and let it uh, enrich the data. So um, these morning coffee dashboards I do for everyone. I think it's a great use case, but I think um, even more importantly is enriching the troubleshooting workbench, right? So the troubleshooting workbench was a new construct that came out in 8.0, I believe. And for me, it's the best, uh, it's the best feature that VMware has come out with uh, for this platform in years, right? I've been building dashboards to kind of mimic what the troubleshooting workbench does for two or three years. Now we get it out of the box. It's clean, it's simple, it's efficient. It's just, it's a beautiful feature. So for those of you that haven't seen it, just go to the homepage, troubleshoot workbench. They used to do these for VMs, host clusters, and they still do um, in many cases. But what you can search for here is any object, right? So any object VROPS is aware of, whether that's a VM, a data store, or say a, a SQL instance, if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of my VMs here. And the troubleshooting workbench presents a lot of data. On the left-hand side, it'll present all of the parents and children of the VM that I selected, right? So in this case, here's the data store it's sitting on. I actually have uh, some SQL running on it. This is my SQL instance. 
my VM is using this Cisco networking switching gear. Uh, it is sitting on this host, et cetera. Across the top, you have potential evidence, alerts, metrics, and events. Basically, things that allow you to potentially find what your problem is, right? So events, property changes, anomalous, anomalous metrics. What's been going on with different events in your environment? When did they happen? What anom uh, metrics are anomalies at this point, right? So think CPU, memory, and the like. These will show for whatever object is related to that VM as well, right? So if I slow running query on this VM, that will show here. Um, of course, you'll see all of the alerts for a, a box. This guy looks like it has some um, um, deadlocks going on. We can click on that. and It'll take us down into the alert detail. But what I really like about the troubleshooting workbench is that you can move up to five steps beyond your target object. So if you're troubleshooting a VM, you can move to the host, you can move to the cluster, you can move to the data store, and then beyond the data store into Bloomadora's discovered objects, things like storage volume, storage lungs, and the like. And the best feature is basically the custom tab. So the custom tab from the troubleshooting workbench jumps you out to the advanced object relationship widget. This is basically tip to tail, top to bottom, full stack visibility of your VM, right? So let me show you what's going on here. Here's our original VM that was unhealthy, right? You can see any of the peers, you can see all of the alerts, you can see any of the details for that VM, simply click on it. Now downstream, we have our first layer, data stores, the SQL instance, the um, port, and any switch gear, right? So here's the data store I'm using. That data store is actually being supported by this peer volume, right? So I'm running some peer flash array in my environment. It's supporting this particular data store. Whatever storage platform was supporting that data store, we would show here. I'm running a SQL instance on this VM. It will also show me things like my databases, my wait types, my queries, my jobs, all of the great information. Down below that, I'll show you the networking gear we're running through, right, all the way down to the port. So things like switches, ports, uh, we show L3 interfaces, vSAN, et cetera. Now up above, you know, I I'm, I'm kind of want to work my way upstream into my host. If this host were running on, say, uh, a UCS blade, I would show that. This guy happens to be running on an EMC rack server, so I'm showing that, right? So I'm running this ESXi host on this power edge gear. This ESXi host is a part uh, you know, various tiers, various clusters. So it's in this cluster, which is in this data center, et cetera. But this gives us kind of our tip to tail, top to bottom. We're looking for unhealthy objects, right? So our VM is unhealthy. My, my storage tier looks good. SQL not, it doesn't look so good, right? So each, each of these little icons, of course, represents the health of that object. So I'm looking for things that are red, things that are yellow and then I'll explore um, a little bit deeper, you know, what's going on with that particular object. So there's a ton that we can do, Shelley, within vRealize operations. I think that it does a lot of great stuff out of the box for your vSphere infrastructure. I think if you want to move beyond the vSphere infrastructure uh, into compute network and storage, we have 58 or 60 different management packs that can help you do that. So um, with that, we have roughly five minutes left, so, so I thought we'd open it up for questions, comments. Um, so back to you, Shelley. Awesome, thank you so much. Let me jump back over to my presentation screen. There we go. Um, you can see that, right, Brock? Uh, yep, I can. All right, awesome. Um, so two more resources on this topic I wanted to call out for you guys. And I'll send over both of these links um, as follow-up to the session. Uh, the first is the uh, manage uh, the management pad kind of exchange or marketplace. Um, this is where you can find all the extended management packs we have available. Um, you can see a few here uh, from Blue Modora, but we also have many available from vendors, and you know we have 108 available. I recommend you know going out to that marketplace and seeing uh, which ones that you can integrate into your VROPS platform. Um, some of them are free, some of them, you know, come with an additional cost, but either way is a great thing to look at or evaluate. The next resource I'll call out for you is something that uh, not many of my customers know about, but it's the VRealize Operations Sample Exchange. 
Um, this is where you can go to download dashboards that other people in the Be Realized community has created. And I will say, uh, Brock Peterson, who you, uh, you know, who we've had with us here today, is a active user on the VROB uh, sample exchange. So for all my customers, I recommend if you want to create custom dashboards or see what other people are doing, go out to that Marks exchange and download some dashboards and integrate them into your environment. And if you need any help figuring out how to do that, like feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to set up a call and show you how to, you know, upload custom dashboards into your um, version of the tool. And just to review what we've talked about today, uh, kind of going from front to back, um, as you guys all, all know, multiple tools can create blind spots and by bringing all that analysis into one place, uh, the visibility that you're getting just becomes so much more powerful. Um, the data is worth nothing if you can't turn it into useful information. If it's not impacting the effectiveness of your infrastructure or the experience for your end users, um, all the data in the world doesn't matter. And that I hope today, now that you see that management and con content packs when integrated across your environment, allow you to stay in control with observability and visibility across your private and public clouds, your applications to your infrastructure, um, you know, and everything that you need to take a look at. So um, on that note, I have a, another survey for you guys. Uh, you know, you, I know many of you are here from our, our session last month, um, and we'll be hosting this session again uh, the second Tuesday of every month. But I just released a poll. Um, I would love for you guys all to vote and uh, tell me what you want to talk about next time um, so that we're tailoring this um, to what you all want to hear. Um, so that poll has just launched. Um, the next um, thing I want to point you guys towards is, let me pull this up. Um, uh, you can see here we are launching a customer facing newsletter. I'll drop this um, into the uh, uh, I'll drop this into the chat for you guys and, and send it out in the follow up. Let me drop it into the chat right now. Um, but if you guys want to go out here and subscribe, uh, this is an email that uh, Tim, Tim and I write uh, and send out every, once a month. Um, and it's kind of on kind of quick tips and uh, videos and stuff to help operationalize VROPs in your environment. So if you want to come out here and review and sign up, uh, I dropped it into the chat. And um, on that note, um, that's all the top content I had here today to cover. But if anyone has any uh, questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and I can promote you to talk and uh, We'll stay on for a few minutes uh, to answer any questions, uh, me and Brock. But I appreciate you guys. Don't forget to vote in the poll. Um, and uh, we'll see you next month.